So Logan Paul apparently injured himself battling Roman Reigns in his match against the WWE Universal Champion at Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia. You're going viral, Roman! By now, there are a number of physicians that have described the injury and how it occurred. This is not that. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what happens next for Logan Paul, assuming that his injuries are as described. All I did was tear my ACL, MCL, and potentially my meniscus. And what this means for his future in the WWE and other martial arts. That's nothing, that's nothing. That's hey, like we're fine, we're, we're weak match. Maybe, maybe eight days. As a knee specialist, orthopedic surgeon, this is what I fix every day. So today, you and Logan are gonna learn. Trust me, I'm the doctor. So this is how it went down. Yo, what's up? Yo, did you see what happened to Logan's uh, leg? No, what are you talking about? What what happened? How did you do that? How did you wrestling? Okay, perfect, man. I'm gonna check it out. Thanks for telling me. Okay, peace. Okay. So now that we're up to speed, let's talk about what happens right now. In the immediate short term, Logan will need to have confirmation of the diagnosis of his suspected injury. In his Twitter post, he stated that he was diagnosed with ACL tear, MCL tear, and likely meniscal tear. If true, this is a combination about which you may have heard in the past, the terrible triad of O'Donoghue. Uh, the unhappy triad is a uh, major injury that can happen to a knee. Uh, it usually happens in contact sports or even motor vehicle accidents. Classically, O'Donoghue described this triad of injuries to involve the MCL, ACL, and the medial meniscus. There's usually a force that happens right through here, can rupture the medial collateral ligament, medial and lateral meniscus, as well as anterior cruciate ligament. However, a study conducted in the 1990s determined that the more common presentation involved the ACL, MCL, and the lateral meniscus. The knee is a hinge joint allowing the leg to extend and bend back and forth with minimal side-to-side -side motion. It consists of four bones and an extensive network of ligaments to help maintain normal function. The ACL is the main stabilizer preventing the femur or thigh bone from falling off the back of the lower leg or tibia, while the MCL is the main stabilizer on the inside of the knee preventing the knee from opening up like a clamshell. The menisci, medial and lateral are cartilage structures that behave like shock absorbers on the inside and outside of the knee respectively. Getting back to Logan. He will obtain an MRI to verify that this is the combination of the injuries that has occurred and that no other serious injuries have occurred that might require surgery. Once his diagnosis has been confirmed, Logan and his physician will discuss a course of action best suited to the combination of injuries he has suffered. Generally speaking, the choices include non-operative and operative treatment. Yes, I did say non-operative treatment. Surgery is not necessarily the best option for all patients with a torn ACL. Now, non-operative treatment would include an extended course of physical therapy that would progress from management of inflammation and swelling through establishment of knee range of motion to restoration of strength and knee proprioception before eventually returning to competitive sport. Non-surgical treatment may be best if the knee cartilage is not damaged. <laughs> and you don't engage in high-risk activities such as jumping and pivoting. While this is indeed an option, proponents of a non-surgical approach should slow their roll just a little bit. Although some studies suggest that non-operative treatment is adequate for normal knee function after ACL injury, only a small percentage of patients will be able to return to a similar level of activity as before their injury after completion of a course of non-operative treatment. Patients who find success after this approach generally return to a lower level of competitive play than what they were involved with when they were injured. Given the level of activity to which Logan seeks to return, I doubt this will be sufficient for him. Which leads us to the other option. Most high level competitive athletes will elect to proceed with an operative course of treatment for their ACL injury. And yes, while there are other injuries that are present, the ACL tear is the injury around which we 
focus our treatment. Of the injuries present, it is the one whose repair is the most complex and takes the longest amount of time from which to recover. Once decided to treat his injury operatively, Logan and his surgeon will have to decide which graft to use for his reconstruction. Ah, I'm nervous. Here, there are four choices. The hamstring tendons, the patellar tendon, the quadriceps tendon, all of which are autographs coming from the patient, and an allograft tendon, which comes from a donor. Each has its own advantages and disadvantages. Generally speaking, autographs, graphs taken from the patient themselves, are more favorable than allografts or grafts taken from a donor. These would be preferred for Logan's treatment. Hamstring and patellar tendon grafts are by far the most common choices of grafts used for ACL reconstruction. Hamstring grafts can be harvested from the back of the leg in isolation, the semitendinosus, or in pairs, the semitendinosus and the gracilis. Patellar tendon grafts are harvested from the front of the knee, just below the kneecap, most times with attached bone at one or two ends. Both grafts offer similar functional outcomes, but patellar grafts are slightly stiffer and have a slightly reduced chance of re-rupture. This comes at the price of an increased chance of post-operative knee pain after recovery. While the frequency with which these grafts are used is comparable, the patellar tendon tends to be used more frequently with professional athletes as a result of the attached bone segments which optimize graft attachment in the tunnels. Quadricep tendon grafts are a newer option that can be harvested from the front of the knee just above the patella. This is an all soft tissue graft that has similar functional outcome as the other two autographs but offers the stiffness of the patellar tendon graft without the post-operative anterior knee pain. Being a newer option, it has less studies that speak to its longevity, but it is certainly becoming a more frequently selected option. Man, he ain't got no ups. He ain't got no imposing body. He ain't built like young Dwight Howard. He ain't built like LeBron. Once the graft has been selected, Logan will undergo an ACL reconstruction by his surgeon's favored approach. I'm going into real life surgery right now. Yeah. Generally, this is an arthroscopic procedure where the graft is harvested and prepared to look like a ligament. Tunnels that will receive the tendon graft will be prepared in both the femur and the tibia. The graft will be guided into the femoral and tibial tunnels and will be secured on both ends by screws, cortical buttons, or both. The meniscus will be examined and repaired if possible using one or more techniques. Repairability of the meniscus is determined by the type of tear that is present and its location. The tears that are the most repairable are simple or horizontal tears that are in the red, red zone, an area of the meniscus that has robust blood supply. There are several techniques that can be used to repair the meniscus, but all inside meniscal repair implant devices are most commonly used. Typically, the MCL is not surgically repaired for most patients, unless there are additional injuries or alignment issues that mandate its repair. Now, after his reconstruction is when the hard work will actually begin. Recovery from an isolated MCL injury without surgery would take three to four months before training would be possible and up to six months for serious competition. Recovery after ACL surgery, on the other hand, is a much more involved process and full recovery would be on the order of nine to 12 months. However, even after full recovery, we can expect it to take between 18 to 24 months before Logan returns to his prior level of athletic performance in the ring. So with that in mind, here are some tips for exercises he may perform during his rehabilitation that will optimize his recovery. Number one, restore full extension first. This means symmetrical knee extension to the uninjured side. Without this, everything else becomes harder, including walking, running, and obtaining a full range of motion of the knee. Normally, my go-to exercise for this is a seated weighted knee extension using a bag of rice or something similar. I advise 20 pounds for 20 minutes twice a day. Number two, bent knee isometric single leg holds to encourage reactivation of the quadricep muscle and to promote development of the VMO portion of the quadriceps. You should work to progress time in a bent knee position. Aim for 60 to 120 second holds. As your time of hold increases, advance the difficulty level by bending the knee further while balancing. Do this exercise a minimum of three to four times weekly, or basically every other day. Number three. I'll drill y'all. Use single leg closed chain strengthening exercises to restore symmetrical strength and muscle bulk for the operative leg. Suitable exercises include step ups, touchdowns, lunges, leg press, or single leg squat variations. Use these exercises two to three times weekly. 
Always position your knee over the outside edge of your foot while performing these exercises. Dynamic valgus is bad and you don't want to promote it during your rehabilitation. Do these exercises three to four times weekly. Number four, include integrated balance, direction change, and proprioception neuromuscular training to restore this functionality in the brain and minimize future recurrences of injury. Start these exercises in the mid to late portion of your rehabilitation, after the graft has had time to attach to the bone around it, and after a full range of motion and functional strength have been restored. Do these exercises a minimum of three to four times weekly. Number five, include plyometric hops and jumps to prepare for a return to competitive activities that include jumping, pivoting, and direction change. You should start out with stationary vertical hops first and master landing mechanics and control in the coronal plane before adding lateral and horizontal hops. Use the same rules for knee position on takeoff and landing that you use for single leg strengthening and single leg balance. Number six, knowing when to return to sport after ACL reconstruction is a decision that is made jointly between you, your surgeon, and your therapist. In the past, it was a time-based decision. But studies now show that athletes who return to sport later than nine months after surgery fare better with less chance of re-injury than athletes who return to sport sooner than nine months. Determination of readiness should be based on objective criteria from an established protocol such as the Melbourne 2.0 ACL Rehabilitation Guide. And once Logan is actually back in the ring, what can we expect in terms of success after surgery and the likelihood of re-injury in the future? A 2016 paper in the American Journal of Sports Medicine looked at primary risk factors in re-injury after ACL reconstruction. This was a meta-analysis of 19 other studies between 1966 and 2015. The authors found that the overall rate of re-injury after an ACL reconstruction was 15% with 7% to the same leg and 8% to the other leg. For those younger than the age of 25, the risk was even higher at 21%. In addition, the rate of re-injury for those athletes who returned to sports was 20%. That sucks, and to be honest, nobody wants that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So it will certainly be worth Logan's while to take his rehabilitation seriously. What happened this camp that you're like so ripped so early? Clarity, bro. No f***ing way. F follow instructions and invest as much time as possible into his recovery if he wants to get back to competing in the WWE in a reasonable time frame. Now I'm sure Logan will have access to the very best doctors, physios, etc., to help with his journey. But perhaps I can add something that he hasn't heard yet. In the very least, we can use this as a teaching moment for anyone else in his position who doesn't have that sort of access to the best healthcare. Oh, shit. If you suffered a knee injury yourself and you're looking for an online resources to help you with your rehabilitation, don't forget to check out our knee health playlist over on Human 2.0 Fitness here on YouTube. There, you can see the exercises that I've used in my own rehabilitation after knee surgery. I'll leave a link in the description down below. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe and send it to someone who needs to hear this. If you didn't, be sure to let me know why down below. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, Not Your Everyday Ortho, where we see one, do one, teach one.